This is Talk Back with Peter Christian and John King. 721-1290 or 1-800-568-5309. This is News Talk KGVO, AM 1290 and now 101.5 FM. News Talk KGVO. Welcome, everybody. It is the Friday, a one-hour edition of Talk Back, brought to you by Office Solutions and Services, locally owned solutions for every office, the Mustard Seed Restaurant, Bitterroot Motors, doing it right for more than 42 years, Automotive Cutting Edge, specializing in all makes, vehicle repair, 542-2218, Transport Equipment, your headquarters for RV service, maintenance and repair, just south of the Y, 541-9097. Rogers & Company Fine Jewelry, offering beautiful, unique fine jewelry at competitive prices, on Mullen Road across from Super Walmart, and Deep Roots Medicinals, offering alternative and natural medicine to treat a wide variety of conditions, veteran-owned and operated. Contact Brian. He's a physiologist. Deep Roots, 531-7461. All right, here we are, ladies and gentlemen. We have uh, the walking wounded with us this morning. That's uh, John King over there. Not only does he have a nasty congestive cough there. No, I'm just falling apart today. You injured yourself. Yeah, I injured myself playing basketball. And no, it wasn't in a fist fight with the kid from Tacoma. (laughs) I thought maybe just jam was, my thumb on the ball and I, well, I thought it's just a jam. I thought it might might have been an accidental wardrobe malfunction. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> although cameras do follow me from all angles, I'm, I am that sure. did not happen. I'm sure. So, so there you go. <laughs> They'd also need a microscope. I uh, <laughs> anyway, welcome everybody. That's more information that we wanted to know, but that's okay. We've got Adam Hertz joining us right now. Adam, of course, is a city councilman and. Uh, how much longer are you going to be in office here, buddy? You're not running again. Uh, yeah, I'll be done at the end of December. So, so you're getting from pre- now until December 31st. Getting pretty close. To do all the damage you can. Exactly, 193 <laughs> well, days. No, you have a kidding. child under the age of three, so you're probably always running, I assume. Yeah, I'm always running. Yeah, yeah. I don't something. know if you heard my horror story where my two-year-old escaped the house because the neighbor kids left the baby gate open, oh, no. and he made it almost a half mile. At, I was devastated yeah yeah i wanted to like put a gps tracker i don't care if it's the mark of the beast i'm (laughs) knowing where you're at (laughs) all right well adam the reason you're here is you were kind enough to share with us a copy thump of the uh of the city budget which is pretty interesting here yeah you know um this is my fourth budget season at the city of missoula and uh every year in the past, I voted against the budget. It's always come with tax increases that I've thought have been unnecessary, and it looks like this year's shaping up to be the same way. The mayor's right. proposed a 5.32% tax increase this year. So now how does, that, how does pa- that compare with the recent years? Well, in past years, uh, you know, I recall it being anywhere from typically 3 to 5%. Okay. So over 5 is more than normal? Yeah, I, I think this is the highest uh, proposed tax increase uh, on my since my time on council. Well, I like how even the uh, city accountants agree with you at not being a very good budget. <laughs> this is apparently the last bad budget. This is actually a <laughs> quote from the budget. <laughs> no, so the last worst budget. Oh, the last worst yeah, budget. Yes. To coin so, a phrase, so to speak. Yeah, uh, that's uh, that's interesting. Uh, so I want to know what 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 what's the the tax hike is for. Well, <clears throat> there's. Uh, several new requests in the budget this year, not all of which have been funded. But again, this is just the mayor's proposal. City council can can play around with it and they can add things and they can subtract things. Uh, my experience is they typically don't subtract things, but they might add things. So um, some of the, the you know new requests are things that we just have to do, like hold a municipal election this fall and we have to pay for that. Um, other new requests are another part-time uh, assistant judge, um, you know, some various capital improvement programs. Um, largely, though, the increases are driven by cost of living increases for city employees. And that, that number is still really a question mark because the union contracts have not finished with negotiation. So it could be higher. Um, so it could be higher. That's, right. that's assuming unions agree to a 2% increase. And I believe the current uh, contract has those unions at three or four percent so the city's asking asking for smaller increases and the unions have yet to agree to that what about non-union city employees i.e mayor and mayor staff um, 
Will they be taking their cola this year, giving themselves a pay increase? <laughs> well, I think that's a sensitive a, subject a with city question. administration. Yeah, I, I, for some reason, I, they might be gun shy to answer that one directly. Have you not been banned from City Hall yet? <laughs> uh, no, this this budget does include a 2% cost of living increase uh, for all city employees, including the mayor and city council members. There you go. So, we'll uh, and, and they are certainly, if they want to, they can... Deny it. If, if they want to, they can accept it, right? It's totally up to them. I'm not entirely sure about that. I think city administration really has the final call on exactly how that's divvied out. I know in past years when they've said we've had a 3% cost of living increase, some people will get one, some people will get five. They said this year it would be 2% across the board. And I had asked before when it came up in council discussion if like council members could deny that increase, and I was told no. Hmm. Um, although the mayor on your show said he would deny yeah, he himself. Could do it. He could do it. He increase. would refuse well, it. Yeah. But then he took he it. He told me he would tell me that. I don't know if there's some linguistic art going on there. So I could tell you that I'm not going to take my <laughs> cola this year, and then you could we'll tell just kind of sweep it under the rug. There you go. No, but I Strategically I've, You know, valuable. I have asked council members to vote on, on raises for elected officials separately in past years, and of course it's always a sore subject. Uh, but... But it is a real conflict of interest when people are voting to give themselves pay raises. I don't necessarily have the right answer to that, but it seems like some sort of independent body that that sets uh, pay structure for elected officials makes a lot more sense. Everybody realizes this is a problem, and they will whine and moan about it when it happens at the federal level, like when our senators and our congressmen are giving themselves pay raises. And they have no problem detesting it and calling it out. But when you call it out closer to home, man— Rain, hell rains down on you. <laughs> like people are, oh, no, I believe that he should be able to give himself a pay raise because he's smiley and I like him and he's friendly. And, you know, really, this should be something that the public votes on, it seems to me. Well, yeah. if, if you look at the, how, how it works for teachers, teachers don't vote themselves a pay raise. That, uh, that That's up to the school board, right? Well, exactly. I mean, it's it, it's just too I mean, much the of unions, a The unions help to, to negotiate that. But uh, but the the school board in effect says yes or no you're going to have an increase in, or not yeah absolutely so it's it's a real conflict of interest to be giving yourself a pay raise and I think it's a larger problem you know whether it's local or federal and I think a lot of the I'm not sure about the feds but I know at a state level um, I think many years ago the legislature kind of built in an automatic pay increase so they could take the heat in that one session and then they never have to vote on it again because it trends uh, that's my understanding of it anyways I don't know what the feds do they probably do the same thing to try and get out of voting themselves a pay raise oh yeah i'm sure they weasel it into uh, <laughs> uh trade bills you can't read well, why whatever not, why, why, why don't you just man up and say look i'm getting a three percent raise so if you don't like it too bad you know uh, really I, that, that why not what's what's wrong anyway we're, we're up against a break seven two one twelve ninety you were about to say something profound so I, go ahead. I, no i was about to give away some coffee okay well let's, <laughs> let's give away some coffee go ahead so give us a call seven two one twelve ninety uh you don't have to uh Take a big tax hit here. We're going to give you the coffee for free. <laughs> free, free, free. Yeah. Free. They might take a sip yeah. and take take an extra 5% of the coffee phone. I don't know. That's up to the Rocket Coffee Stand. Uh, but the Rocket Coffee Stand is in the Garden City Garden Supply right across from the Eastgate Shopping Center. And I believe they're giving away tickets to an upcoming yeah. uh, comedy show you here bet. when uh, Dave Chappelle comes through. Right. So, so we're Give us a call, 721-1290. It's uh, Missoula City Council Band. Ow! Adam, what would you play if you were in the city council band? Well, I am a guitarist, well, so I go. suppose right. I would play the guitar. Right there. Actually, Again, you will love that. Actually, people, I'm sorry, John. Uh, he's actually a pretty good guitarist. Cool. He had a pretty famous band for a while, didn't you? Many years ago. What, Many uh, years what, ago. I can play Twinkle Twinkle but Little Star now. things live on YouTube forever. <laughs> what, 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 what band was it? It was the Sharktopus. Really? Yeah. The Sharktopus? I was in the Sharktopus. Yeah. I, I remember seeing some pretty crazy... Uh, Flyers for shark to I was uh, I was in a band called the Dark Side. The Dark Side. Back in uh, back in the day, back in the sixties and seventies. And what did you play, Peter? I had a double bass drum Ludwig set with like seven cymbals and the whole. I was I was the I was really in shape because I had to haul it all myself. <laughs> That's awesome. That was that was you know before double bass was really a big thing. Oh yeah, I, I like did. it. I loved it. Anyway. Hey, we got a band right here. I, let's just keep going. And so so what do you play, John? Uh, uh, John can rap battle <laughs> surprisingly well. Actually, okay, we're we're in the middle of talking about the city budget, not about <laughs> this musical nonsense. Speaking of uh, things in the city budget, I went through myself and kind of highlighted stuff I thought of interest. So oh, let's just start on the front page. 
and uh, uh, go kind of Feel through. Feel free to follow along. I, I believe you probably put this on our Facebook. I will, page. but I haven't yet. Um, one of the things that jumped out at me was this $15 an hour minimum wage. And I wonder why they're going with the Hillary Clinton number and not the 1010 number that Barack Obama has supports <laughs> well that that's actually not recommended for funding in the mayor's budget but that was a proposal from city councilman alex taft um so i'm sure that will be debated and it is a minimum wage for city employees only to be clear it's not a citywide minimum wage the city has no ability to, to do that um but so, i'm so, sure so, that will so be in other debated. words so in other words if, if i go out and rake leaves or, or whatever you know the, the minimum wage i'll get is 15 dollars an hour if you are a city employee, city employee that's that's the proposal okay all right so so now let me ask you this now because this has happened all over the country los angeles just passed a uh, uh an ordinance their city council voted i think it was 12 to 1 or 11 to 1 or whatever to say 15 dollars numbers yeah uh, million uh, 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 15 15 dollar per hour uh, uh, minimum wage. Now, what has happened concurrently is the business councils within the city have launched uh, efforts to try to automate many of the things that that minimum wage workers would would be doing that they used to pay, you know, nine dollars or whatever. If they're going to be paying fifteen bucks, they're saying, okay, well, that kind of money we can afford to automate. And so, a lot of those people that were counting on getting those fifteen dollar an hour jobs are now not going to have a job at all because it's going to be done by a machine. Yeah. So what what does that accomplish? I could automate the entire city council after Adam Hertz leaves. <laughs> Just get an oil derrick pumping right on City Hall and put a rubber stamp on the back of that oil derrick, and then everything the mayor wants, just rubber stamp it. You're pretty good. Pretty similar to what we have. Now you, but, but but specifically speaking, you you are well, what is what is known as the loyal opposition, right? In city council, pretty much. I suppose so. When when uh, when so many the things that happen when there's a vote with only one dissenting vote, it's usually yours, right? So, and you're leaving. <laughs> so. I am. I'm. You know, I'm working to find good replacements. Though I'm real excited about a candidate in Ward Two, which is the ward I represent. His right. name's Harlan Wells. Um, there's some other good candidates that have been sort of kicking the idea around. And certainly, if people are interested in running for city council, I'd love for them to get in contact with me. Or if you want to join Sharktopus. <laughs> yeah. Or if you want to <laughs> reunite so looking for new members. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, so tell me uh, some of the other big expenditures. What's a community support specialist? You know, I'm not exactly sure what uh, I think. For that, that kind of money, I'm I'm applying. I, I'm supporting I, the community right now. <laughs> that hasn't really been talked about because it wasn't recommended uh, for funding in the mayor's budget. Uh, that was a request from the police department that looks like it's going to go unfunded. I believe it's uh, some sort of a downtown, an additional downtown police officer or, oh, okay. you know, that sort of basically, thing. Like basically a, like a liaison between the streets and the city. A or... semi sort of semi civilian police officer, I think, is what the proposal is. So it's um, not a skateboard cop or a bike <laughs> cop <laughs> it might be it okay. might sort of be right. like a, that a but i don't think it's going to yeah, be funded uh, i think it's seattle has a skateboard cop di- division to be cool and hip and fresh Very with cool. the skaters so they can bond you know <laughs> not learn to fear the cops i some grinds i'm 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 down with that <laughs> <laughs> uh, you could be cane cop. <laughs> walker cop <laughs> Right on. <laughs> Tony Hawk cop. There you go. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Being silly. Now, now what, what are the, what we're actually, we've wasted enough time now. We're up against another break. But when we come back, I want to talk about the uh, the money for the water company acquisition. Sure. And uh, I, because everybody needs to know exactly where we are. The reason this is important is I've been told by inside sources at the uh, district court level that that decision is going to come down very, very soon. Could be today, could be Monday, could be within the next week or so. As Judge Townsend has had that for quite some time now, since the middle of March, basically. Judges like to drop this stuff at 5 o'clock on Friday. Yeah. So guess where I'm going to be at 4.45 this afternoon? I'm going to be in the district court office, just in case. And I and if I, if I can get it, I'll get it. And uh, I, I'm this is a true story. That's exactly where I'm going to be. Because the, this is a huge, huge decision. That, that Judge Towns, I do not envy her and the fact that this was a bench trial. This, there's no jury involved. She has to make the decision one way or the other for the city or for the or for Carlisle Group, which one made the best case. Well, and she knows that whatever her decision is, is going to go up the line. So it has to be good enough for Supreme Court level judges to read. So, and, and she's she's a very good judge. So uh, we will we'll see what happens. Uh, I, I 
Originally, I thought that it was going to go the city's way, especially if it if the decision was given very quickly. But it's been months, and so it uh, she's obviously been digging deep and finding all sorts of things that she can and find. And then so. we saw the city try to make its case. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, seven two one twelve ninety is our number. If you want to talk with uh, with Adam Hertz, uh, who's who's with us. Like, they called everyone, including JoJo the Circus Clown, and I still wasn't sold. All right, anyway, let's... <laughs> JoJo the Circus Clown? All right, John, John's just a little bit on edge today. We'll be right back with more in just a moment. And hey, we're back on Talkback. 721-1290 is our number. John King's over there. He's the Hurton unit. And uh, joining us here in studio, Adam Hertz, uh, who is a city councilor, and we have a Facebook comment. Go Some ahead. questions from Facebook. Okay. Katie says, how likely... Is it that the city council would pass an increased minimum wage? Now, if you didn't catch it earlier, this is just for city employees. I do have a question, though, whether or not it would apply to city contracts. So, for example, city has uh, weeds. For example, someone lets their uh, grass grow too tall. They're not going to take care of it. So the city will hire someone to do this job for them. Um, when I was a kid, I did this. And I, I put in, we put in a bid, the company I worked for, and it, we wanted $50 an hour. And they, they stamped it, which back when I was a kid, I'm not as old as Peter, but it was still a lot of money, $50 an hour. And uh, wow. yeah, it wasn't 50 seashells or anything. Wow. It was $50. Uh, but the, uh, wow. uh, the city got it because they, someone like transposed a number. They thought it was like $15. And anyway, we did the job and they ended up paying us a whole lot of money and had to pull all the contracts with us. And it was a big deal, but we were kind of happy because we only had to work for two days and we got a... <laughs> Tank load of money. Uh, so uh, anyway, I, I guess my question is: Does would contracts like that that the city guarantees or 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 bids out on would those things all have to be bid at fifteen dollars an hour? Would they have to pay some kid lawnmower that would normally get nine dollars an hour another five dollars? That's a good question. Yeah, we haven't $6. talked about the the specific proposal, but I believe it's just for city employees, not for contracts. And the, the city does contract plenty of work out, but the city also does the vast majority of work in-house, whether it's parks and maintenance type stuff or forestry or even streets now. You'll see you know, the reconstruction of Third Street is largely being done by city crews versus private contractors. I'm okay. curious to know who these under fifteen dollar an hour workers are. I think there's a, I think there's actually very few in the city. I think there's a handful of probably administrative assistants and those sorts of jobs. Uh, but keep in mind that those jobs come with excellent benefits, including you know a Cadillac health plan. The mayor says it's a Chevy, but it's a Cadillac, and um, uh, public employees retirement and you know job security. Okay, let's get uh, Catherine on the line. Good morning, Catherine. You're on with Adam Hertz. Go ahead. Uh, good morning. Good morning, Adam. Good morning. Um, okay, I wanted to ask you about the Riverfront Development Project and the attendant traffic and infrastructure changes, the cost to this point, and the cost to tax, taxpayers going forward. Do you have esti- yeah. estimates of that? You know, unfortunately, I don't. It, the The proposal that was given to us um, was was. I, w- I don't want to call it vague, but in the in the realm of a hundred and fifty million dollar project, pretty vague. Um, it, it certainly includes a, a vacation of part of Front Street that turns it into kind of a walking pedestrian mall. There's going to have to be traffic changes at Orange and uh, Broadway yeah. to accommodate. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a convert. I talked about conversion of Front and Main from. One ways to two ways moving forward, but as far as the cost of all of that, none of that has yet been presented or proposed well, to ac- city council. Actually, the uh, I, I talked with Patrick Barkey, the Bureau of Business and Economic Research, did a preliminary uh, uh, study on on what the economic benefits would be. And, sure, and they said it was pretty good. I mean, yeah, I mean, we've they've definitely done a study on economic benefits and job creation and all that, but as far as what the city would have to would have to come up with in terms of any infrastructure improvements. Right now, the city, the city has no know. skin in the game except from, except from owning the property, right? Yeah, at this point, the city owns the property, but it isn't an urban renewal district, so the Missoula Redevelopment Agency will certainly have some involvement, whether it's utility relocation or infrastructure. There will certainly be um, city money uh, in that end of it. And then certainly you've probably seen in the news that the developers will likely ask for some sort of an operating subsidy for the conference center. That yep. number has also not exactly been nailed down because there's not a specific request for it 
Um, but certainly, tax subsidies? I, any tax subsidies for building in the first place? Well, um, the the city doesn't really do any sort of tax subsidies necessarily like that. They use what are called urban renewal districts, where they draw a line around a so-called blighted neighborhood. Sometimes they're not so blighted. And um, they take any increment from an increase in tax base, and it gets put into an urban renewal district that then developers can use for help with infrastructure, you know, sidewalks, um, maybe, um, you know, raising old buildings, things like that. So that would be the sort of city subsidy these developers might receive. But as far as a as far as some sort of direct tax abatement or something, that's not, in, in my knowledge, something the city does. I think the county did something like that when Direct TV came in. But, um, you know, they this direct subsidy that the developers will likely be asking for is certainly something new in my time on council. And all of this is likely to happen after I'm no longer on city council. I, I mean, it's been a long process. It's been a four, almost a four year. Now, now uh, don't they have 18 months They've been given 18 more right, months, right, uh, right. but they've been at it for about four years. So it is a long right. process, and they are working really hard uh, to get it done. It's just a huge, huge yeah, it's project. It's a huge project, absolutely. Okay, well, is the uh, development uh, group, the one out of Portland, the, uh, what's it called, something Corambula, I believe? No, the development group is actually local. It's the Farron Company, um, and I, and they're in partnership with some, some other folks. But it is local. They're out of Missoula, and they've done several okay. projects around here and around uh, the Pacific Northwest. Huh. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Hey, thanks, Bye. thanks for the call. Uh, let's, let's, let, what? A quick question from Mitchell. Go ahead. Adam, where are you headed next politically? I am going to be the armchair politician that yells at my TV when people <laughs> say frustrating things. Now, let, um, me, <laughs> let me ask you this. Would, would you be someone who would go to the city council meetings when there's something going on and, and testify? Maybe, but I mean, I guess it would depend on the makeup of the council. I feel like they just don't listen to people, and I don't. And I don't it also like depends on the Monday night football game that night, right? <laughs> <laughs> Not a big sports fan, I'm more of a political fan, but um, no, I do have a daughter who's approaching 16 months old and, and another one on the way, and I'm really busy at work, and I don't really foresee any political future for me at this point, although I know other people, including my wife, have different plans for me. But you're <laughs> so, a young guy. Yeah, but it's been a great experience, and I really enjoy it, and I wish I had the time to continue to pursue it. I but, know you're going to hear this a lot, but your wife is right. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. And, and you know, my father's in the legislature. He's followed in my footsteps and got elected the year after I did. Terrific. Which I always rub in his face that I'm the more seasoned politician. <laughs> um, but, you know, he'd love to have me over in Helena with him as well. But I just don't have the time. And well, the campaign slogan is, is ready made. Give till it hurts. <laughs> his is, I think his was drive hurts to Helena or something. <laughs> okay. We're overdue for a break. So, John, I want you to ask you uh, ask you to hang on for just a second. We'll be right back with more in a moment. Hey, we're back on TalkBack. 721-1290 is our number. That's John King over there. I'm Peter Christian. Adam Hertz joining us here in studio, city councilor for the next six months anyway. Quitter. <laughs> just kidding. All right, let's get John on the line. John, uh, thank you for holding, sir. We appreciate it. What's on your mind? Yes, sir. Uh, so in the past, uh, as a college student, I had a summer seasonal position with the city. They're great. They're you know, seasonal. They're designed to be filled by high school and college students. They're not designed to to live on. They're temporary. Would the wage increase um, affect those jobs as well? And where would they plan to get the money from? Yeah, the the wage increase would be targeted at those jobs. Um, they would plan to get the money from you, the taxpayers. Um, again, this is not in the mayor's. Uh, budget proposal but it is proposed by city council so i don't know if it'll come through but yeah it would certainly uh, it would be to all city jobs um part-time or full-time is my understanding and the just to refresh uh the tax increase requested is five what point three two yeah it's it's sort of changed and i'm sure it will slightly change but it's right around there five point three percent anything else john uh no sir thank you i appreciate it and i'm sad to see you go Thanks. Hey, thanks for Thank the call. You. All right, good deal. Let's get Emmett on the line. Emmett, you're on Talkback. Go ahead. By the way, two lines open at 721-1290. Oh, thanks for taking my call. Yeah, hi, Adam. Hey, um, um, you know, I've asked this question before, and I know I'm sounding redundant. It's just I, I'm still confused about the mountain water sale, about the water sale, and who owns it. 
the city or Carlisle or the private mountain water. And if the sale went bad, if the city got it or whatever, does that mean that the water prices would increase and we would suffer with the quality of water suffer that we might have bad stuff in the water. Why should we be so passionate about this when it's merely tap water that I drink anyway and use for my coffee? It's so confusing. Maybe you, Adam, could explain why this is such a passionate issue for so many people. I'm still confused, you know. Okay, Emmett, thanks. Yeah, Emmett, thanks for calling, and that's a good question. Um, I have not voted to pursue the condemnation of mountain water, though I've largely been a minority in that effort. But... um, where it's at is it's in the district court judge's hands, and as Peter says, he's going to be down there knocking on their door at four thirty this afternoon, hoping for a verdict. But well, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just I'm just anticipating, just in yeah. case, and I, and hopefully that does come soon. But it could be anywhere from weeks to months until yeah. we see that decision. Uh, where it's at right now is. Um, it's, it's like when you're sitting in the taxi cab in traffic and the meter's just running and running and running, and that's what's going on right now. The city's at about $3.1 million in expenses, and my understanding is that uh, between Carlisle and Mountain Water, they're over $5 million now, so we've got over $8 million in total expenses. Um, we don't have a decision at this point, so we're just kind of in a waiting game. I guess why people have been so passionate about this is a good question. I don't want to necessarily read their minds, but it kind of started out, there was an argument from city administration that if city owned, if the city owned the water system, rates would be lower. Well, I think they brought that argument to investment bankers who probably laughed them out of their offices uh, because it's just factually not possible uh, for anybody who understands how uh, utilities work and how debt service works and how public utilities are regulated. Um, and so the next argument became, you know, an, a necessity argument, and that's the only way that, that the city could municipal, municipalize the system under state law. So then the lawyers came up with the idea that somehow Mountain Water had been running the system very poorly and there was a leakage rate that was unwarranted. Uh, and that's the argument that they largely went with, despite, you know, in the beginning, I think it was well-intentioned thinking that somehow the city was going to save folks money. Well, you know, if you paid any attention to the trial, the arguments from Mountain Water and the arguments, I mean, I guess it's not even an argument, it's pretty factual, based on certain purchase prices, rates would essentially go up significantly. I mean, if the purchase price were somewhere in the $100 million range, I think I saw there'd be a 12% increase on day one and a 6% increase per year, something in that range. So the likelihood that rates would ever go down or even grow at the pace they're growing right now under city ownership is very low. Rates will necessarily skyrocket. Any any benefits would be very long term. Yeah, any benefits would be long term. And although, you know, the mayor has even talked about that. Well, in 40 years, we'll have this system, you know, we'll have the debt service retired and, and rates will go down or, or you know. That's just not the case because anytime there's an upgrade to the system, the the city won't have the money to make it. So the city will borrow money and the system will perpetually be in debt. That debt will never go away. So the likelihood that we'll ever have the system paid off or rates will ever go down is is very, very unlikely. Right. How many times have your taxes gone down? And <laughs> and the one thing is, uh, and, and the mayor has, has an interesting comeback to this argument, is if the city does own it, it's no longer under the purview of the Public Service Commission. Uh, it, and now, it, as the mayor said, well, it'll be on the purview of 12 city councilors and a mayor, and they're all up for re-election every four years. So, uh, you know, six of one, half dozen of the other. Which one do you prefer? Uh, I'd, I'd much prefer Public Service Commission oversight because they're professionals at this. I mean, if you if you look at city council's track record on approving sewer rate increases or, or approving uh, tax increases. I mean, it's pretty much a rubber stamp. It's uh, city council members are not professional utility regulators, but um, you know the public service commission is. I think uh, it was convenient for the mayor to make that argument because the PSC is entirely made up of Republicans at this point, and he despises us Republicans. But the fact is that um, you know the mayor largely lobbied for the sale to Carlisle in the first place. I don't think that would have been approved. It, it was voted against by two Republicans. It was voted for by two Democrats and one Republican who had largely been lobbied by the city council and the mayor. And I'm not sure that, that we'd even be in this position had the mayor not lobbied so hard to get the system in Carlisle's hands because he believed that they would turn, turn around and sell it to the city. And I think just underlying all this, to answer Emmett's question, there's a fundamental difference between Democrats and Republicans on whether or not public ownership is like a, a natural good versus private ownership. And that's really what's at the stake of this. 
Does your city own the water? And is that necessarily better than if a private enterprise owns the water system? That, that, that's all part of your political worldview, right? Yeah, and there, I mean, there's cities that own uh, utilities. Uh, the city of Missoula owns a sewer system, and uh, that's just fine. The reason the city of Missoula owns a sewer system is because the city started that sewer system. There was not a private company that wanted to do it. The government had to step up and say, if we want to have a, a clean aquifer and we don't want raw sewage running all over the place, let's build a sewer system because nobody was willing to do that with private money. That's how municipalities uh, come to own utilities. And and that's just fine. And it works out um, in in many cases. But in this case, this is just a city going to a private company attempting to forcefully take it over. And uh, in my worldview, that's not appropriate at all. It's a slippery slope. And if the city wins this, it's a really scary precedent, really. We're going to take a little break. Come right back. 721-1290. We have, and and uh, Bob, we're going to get your call here in just a moment. We have two lines open and we'll be right back. Just imagine sitting by Flathead Lake at a bed and breakfast with Bono. Anyway, did you see that? It was pretty cool. Yeah, he anyway. was there. Uh, uh, there was a creepy love affair going on with one of our local DJs here who is apparently in love with Bono. Yeah. Who's He's Bono? also married. And, uh, oh, Aaron Trailer <laughs> really likes Bono. Nice. Well, why not? He's a leader of one of the biggest bands in the world. So let's get Bob on the line. Uh, Bob, you're on Talkback. Hi. Uh, good morning. Good morning, Adam. Good morning. I was calling in about the, uh, the water company. Uh, they looked at the history of that. There's also uh, almost an appeal by one party or the other after that, and yet the legal bills will then continue to run for years, by the way. And uh, the mayor originally estimated 400000 for this. He's off by a few multiples. And uh, then the one of the big arguments, well, we're exporting $2 million a year to an out-of-state company. Well, how many million are we already exporting out of this to an out-of-state law firm? So, yeah, that's, and, a, good, uh, that's a, a really good point. And um, how much will we be exporting? I mean, right now we're exporting profit, but if we finance this system entirely with debt because the city has no ability to put equity, if we take out a $100 million loan to buy this system, how much interest will we be exporting in terms of our debt payments? I mean, what's the difference between debt profit and equity profit? You know, there's really no difference. So we're looking at exporting really probably more money out of state to bondholders than we're currently exporting in profit. I mean, it's just absolutely mind-boggling, and I think it's got totally tied up emotionally rather than intellectually, and we're just looking like a bunch of bathrooms. (laughs) <laughs> okay. Thanks Thanks for the call, Bob. All, all I can say is, on the other end of this, if it ends up being a loss, uh, and it actually says this in the budget, uh, that money will have to come out of the general fund to pay for it, right? Yeah, now, I mean, if, this... If I, if I can just read this, I'll... Sh- sure. Don't mind. This is actually right out of the, the letter from Mayor Engen to the city council regarding the, the budget. Uh, it's under the title of Water Acquisition, and I quote, The city has incurred approximately $3.1 million in professional fees related to the acquisition of the public water system. These costs have been incurred in the Water Utility Enterprise Fund and have been paid through internal borrowings from the city treasury. A decision on the water acquisition case is expected from district court at any time. In the event the city is successful, these costs will be capitalized as part of a system acquisition costs. In the event the city does not prevail, these amounts would have to be paid from an unrestricted source such as general fund balance, a limited obligation financing, or a combination of the two. Final disposition of the court case and related costs are expected to occur no earlier than fiscal year 2017. Yeah, and and I I mean, (laughs) there's your vague plan for how the city deals with a loss, general fund balance and or limited obligation financing. It's interesting the mayor's only put $3.1 million in here because whether the city wins or loses, the city's responsible for both sides, which is now over $8 million. We have absolutely no whoa, whoa, ability. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Even if we win, we're responsible for the other side's? Oh, yeah. 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 It actually says that in there, too. Whether we win or lose, provided, there's a caveat, if we win and the valuation comes in a dollar or higher than our our final offer, which was $50 million. I have no doubts that if the city wins, the value is going to come in higher than $50 million. So we will be responsible for both sides, uh, 
there are some arguments about that. There were also arguments about what this case would cost. Some people said 400000 I said millions. So far, I've been right. I, I hope that people will trust me on this. We, bu- we will be responsible for both sides, whether we and win or Millions, lose. you're still, even on Jeopardy rules, you haven't <laughs> gone over vague. yet. I was <laughs> vague about millions. It could price be tens is, price of Price is millions. right rules. Price is right. Remember, you can't just can't go over. All right, so let's, uh, let's get Bruce on the line. Bruce, thank you for holding, sir. Go ahead. Hey, good morning, gentlemen. Adam, we're going to miss your, your clarity. Thank you, Bruce. Yeah, you bet. Um, okay, so you well, you guys just robbed my thunder there, but uh, I'll, I'll bring up a question of the appeal process because win or lose, either side's going to appeal, right? Yep, that's right, most likely. And we're going to be we're going to be on the hook for the legal costs for their appeals too. Yeah, I mean, um, it, it's certainly going to be a question that would go to city council. If the city loses, will the city appeal? And I mean, gosh, I would just. If you can't win in front of a fairly liberal district court judge who's got a lot of political pressure on her to rule with the city, I don't see how you're going to win in, in the Supreme Court. But I don't think that will stop my colleagues from incurring millions of more dollars in legal expenses to try and appeal it. Certainly, if Mountain Water uh, and Carlisle Group lose at the district court, I would imagine they will appeal. But they're an enterprise, and they're going to probably do whatever's going to result in the most money in their pocket at the end of the day. Well, you know, I'm just thinking that at what point are they going to, like, give up? I mean, are we going to spend enough money to have already bought it anyway and not <laughs> buy it? Well, I mean, really, it, it and, and I'm not trying to exaggerate here, it, it's almost certain to go over $10 million, but okay. we're, we're maybe halfway there. I don't really know how far we are. I mean, this could seriously approach $20 million. And, yeah, and, so I was going to say, let's put up one of those big Super Bowl boards and we can pick an amount. <laughs> and, uh, well, I guess... Uh, I'll bring the car if you bring the feathers. Right. Hey, <laughs> thanks for the call, sir. We appreciate that. We're up against a break. Seven two one twelve ninety. All three lines open. We also have Facebook open. If you have a comment or question, Adam Hertz joining us for another eight minutes or so. Adam, of course, not running for re-election. His term ends at the end of December. We'll be right back. Hey, it's talk back, and we're rocking. Seven two one twelve ninety is our number. One eight hundred five six eight five three zero nine. We've got lines open. We've got Facebook open. We got John with a bandaged thumb. <laughs> we have uh, Adam Hertz joining us here from uh, War Two. And uh, Adam ready to... Hertz, John Hertz, we're all we're all <laughs> suffering here. Uh, yeah, we got a John's in pain. Yeah, <laughs> we got a comment from Greg here. Uh, Greg says, as I understand it, Montana is bouncing at the bottom of the forty nine as forty ninth in the nation uh, wage wise. Here on the socialist side of Montana, our mayor feels empowered to rule as Premier Obama. Uh, when will the electorate realize this behavior cannot be sustained? Uh, Adam, you want to try? I, I, I'll say this. <laughs> if the city loses this water trial, it will be such a black mark on the uh, city council and the mayor who look like deer kicking in quicksand here uh, trying to get this thing done. I mean, by the way, this is a second water trial, the second suit for the same company, which we lost to throw more money after, you know, good money after bad, basically it, it, it will look bad. Even if you're the most liberal extremist in Missoula, you got to wonder, wow, they went about this wrong. At least, at least you have to come to the conclusion they had bad strategy. Yeah. I would start to think that people would wake up at that point. I mean, we're also just starting to saddle ourselves with debt in terms of the parks bond that was passed, the school bonds that will likely be passed. Got $158 million there. $40 million's already been passed. Whatever bond the library might ask for, whatever right. bond we... I mean, it's just, it, it kind of, it never ends. And I think at some point there is a breaking point. Um, it, it, th- but we also have a university and we routinely import people and then indoctrinate them into liberals and turn them out to be good voters. Actually paid for by a Swiss, Swiss pedophiles, apparently. Yeah. Did you see that? I, I did see that. Uh, I don't know if you saw this, this big grant that they get to go to the University of Montana to become uh, environmental um, specialists, advocates, litigationists, um, funded by the Swiss uh, billionaire who just got in trouble for... Uh, I believe, pedophilia. Oh, Lord um, yeah, and interesting connections there. Uh, anyway, uh, one thing I wanted to point out. Uh, so yeah. they're projecting that the four, uh, fiscal year 2016 budget, uh, that the increases in property taxes will be about $3,448,416. Uh, I thought that was a really interesting figure because basically it means all of the value that was increased in the city of Missoula property tax-wise wiped away by that $3.1 million figure in the water lawsuit. 
Yeah, I, I don't have those numbers right in front of me, but um, there they are. Um, <laughs> but no, it, and another point I guess I'd just like to make in terms of growth in the city is, I mean, anybody who's driven around the city has seen that we've had a fair amount of, of reinvestment into the city in terms of some pretty big projects and some pretty big projects that are on the horizon. The problem is we've created so many urban renewal districts throughout the city. And so any of the increment, any of the growth in the tax base in those areas gets funded into, gets funneled into the Missoula Redevelopment Agency uh, for use back into that district. And, and not into the general fund. Yeah. I mean, there's times when, when, when that makes sense, when you truly have a blighted area, um, when there, nobody's willing to reinvest in it. And it's kind of the only way you you can you can salvage that infrastructure, but we've created so many of those that we're now diverting that money from the city's general fund. It gets diverted from other cha- taxing jurisdictions like the state and the county and the school districts and you know the the mountain line, the transportation district. So we're a lot of this growth that we're getting, we're not we're not getting the benefits from it at the moment. Now, now what what about all the nonprofits that are here in Missoula? Do they uh, do they contribute to the tax base at all? And or or are they just you know also uh, beneficiaries of government largesse? For the most part, they don't contribute. We do have some special some special improvement districts and some some special assessments where nonprofits um, will pay into at times, like the business improvement district downtown. There's you know that'll get assessed to nonprofits, and there's some special districts. Uh, but for the most part, no, they don't contribute to, to any of the property and, taxes. And in case you didn't know, per capita, at least. Several years ago, Missoula had the most nonprofits per capita of any city in the United States. Yeah, and and, we'll, and so. we're also walking backwards sometimes in terms of our tax base because we create these urban renewal districts that are meant to increase the tax base, and then you know we'll we'll bulldoze an existing building and replace it with nonprofit housing or replace it with the Pavarella Center or what have you, all of which is non-taxable. So it, the the goal of these urban renewal districts is to increase the tax base, and in some cases we're removing the tax base and now, replacing it with nonprofits. Now, th- th- let me just be clear. All, all these things, I mean, they're well intended. I mean, the intentions are, are their best of intentions. Well, the folks need help. They need assistance. We need to do what we can. We're, we're, we're generous. We're compassionate. All that kind of stuff. I need but, a personal pay raise. But, 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 af- but after a while, <laughs> after a while, uh, the, the, the general citizenry has to stand up and say, wait a minute. Wait, 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 uh, my, my tax bill keeps going up and up and up and up and up, and I feel like I'm paying way more than my fair share. Yeah, well, I mean, Santa Claus is great when he shows up on Christmas. He brings you all these great toys and everything, but you got to see what it's like back uh, where the elves are working and the people that are actually working hard and paying for it. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, it's easy as a politician to be Santa Claus. It's a little tougher to be somebody like me who's trying to give you a reality check and saying that this is not sustainable, this isn't going to last forever. And the mistakes we're, we're making right now are, over the long term, just going to make things worse and worse and worse. Uh, speaking of sustainable, this environmentalist that I mentioned earlier, his name is Hans-Jörg Wiss, um, and he's funded a, a bunch of different uh, enviro groups in the state of Montana. Also a little donation to the Clinton Foundation and, uh, and funds two grants for scholarships at the University of Montana. All right. Well, you have to keep in mind, too, that there is a significant uh, portion of the Missoula citizenry that are well aware of, of the costs that are going on in Missoula, and they don't care. They, they, they think it's okay for Missoula to be, the, in order for Missoula to be the city it is, then we have to step up and pay for the things that we want to make this better community. And, and I, I understand that. I, I, and I accept that. And these are folks who are always going to vote for every bond issue. They're always going to vote for every for every tax increase, school, parks, whatever. And so, but the rest of us who are not in favor because it's the majority rules, you know, we all end up having. Well, to this pay is what the it. mayor says in his opening sentence here: uh, modest increases in our general fund budget to pay for programs and personnel. A majority of our citizens consider essential and employs a special district to meet outstanding needs that can't be managed through the general fund. Basically saying that this is what the city wants. Um, the problem is if you go to city council, as I, I, I believe you do from time to time, Adam, <laughs> I as a city a councilor, uh, there's nobody there. <laughs> yeah. yeah I'm, I mean, the I, engagement of this city in politics is lacking. It's very difficult when hey, real quickly, we have 30 seconds. How do we get in touch with you if you want to make our comments known as a city councilor? You bet. Uh, my contact information is on the city website uh, under city council members. You can also find me on Facebook and Twitter and other places on okay. the internet. And in my studio. 
and right here in the studio, if you hurry. What's coming up on Monday's fabulous Open program? Phones. Open phones. Oh, and health talk. Yeah, health talk. Oh, yeah. But, well, join us then, folks. Have yourself a, a glorious weekend, and we will be back uh, Monday morning, bright and early, 6 o'clock for Montana Morning.